Certainly a lot of questions in the wake of Sunday's slaying of a 30-year Defense Force officer on the grounds of the highest office in the land. Chief among them, why? It's a concern the National Security Minister says will be left in the hands of a special team charged with looking at the incident from both a practical and procedural standpoint. Leah Cooper has the story. The results of a preliminary investigation, now common knowledge, but the government's pressing authorities to take a closer look at the circumstances surrounding the shooting death of Royal Bahamas Defense Force Petty Officer Philip Perpal at Government House Sunday morning. That calls for authorities determining more so what happened, why, if there were any breaches, and how was the incident allowed to happen and in such a secure public place in order to address the matter more aggressively. Based Based on what Police Commissioner Anthony Ferguson shared with reporters during a briefing at the Central Detective Unit Sunday afternoon, a man accessed Government House Guardhouse around 2.30 a.m. Sunday. Once there, he opened fire on the Guard Commander, wounding him several times before fleeing the premises. He was pursued by alert um, Marines. However, he made good his escape. Paramedics were summoned to the scene where they examine the victim and pronounce him dead at that location. A team of detectives from the Central Detective Unit, along with Commodore and his team from the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, um, went to that location. And from all indication, we have an active investigation ongoing. I also wish to say that there is a person of interest that we are talking to and hopefully from talking to this person we are able to bring some resolve to this place to this investigation. Defense Force Commodore Tellus Bethel described the slain officer as a great man who left his mark on the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. A peacekeeper, Prabal served overseas in Haiti with the United Nations mission. He was recently a part of the team that adopted the cemetery for the British Legion, investing a lot of time into modernizing the property. This, said Commodore Bethel, was a reflection of Prabal's heart and his commitment to service. He was hardworking, he was dedicated. And he was committed, and so he had earned the respect of his peers. And so this has come across as a real blow to the members of the Defense Force, and it's ricocheted throughout the force, and certainly there will be a need for healing among the members of the force, especially those who worked in his department. And throughout this whole process of investigation, we have committed ourselves to providing full support to the investigation. Whatever information is required, whatever procedures need to be followed, we have committed ourselves to provide that support for the commission and his team. National Security Minister Marvin Dames meantime sought to assure that the government is committed to security. In fact, he acknowledged that Sunday's slaying speeds up the question of protection at key government buildings. It is time, high time, for us to, to, to move in that direction. We are living in a different world nowadays, um, and we must, we must move with the times. And so um, very shortly we will be um, getting back to you on that. Reporting for JCN News, I'm Leah Cooper. Commodore Bethel also confirming that he and his leadership team have met with Propal's grieving family and that counseling has started for those officers on the scene during the incident. Our chaplain has had an opportunity to meet with them. And over time what I've come to realize about the members of the Defense Force, there's a certain resilience that we do have. It's been proven over the years. So I believe that they have that kind of stamina and a willingness to go forward. And as for reports making the rounds on social media, he said those behind it are doing more harm than good. It's very irresponsible and it dampens the morale of those who want to do better. And so I encourage all of those uh, out there in the uh, social media world to act responsibly. And as was mentioned by the Commissioner of Police, Let's stick to the facts um, and let's keep people focused on the task at hand. While we are addressing this, at the same time, we must continue to address those matters that threaten our security. 
Now, while no timeline's been given on when a suspect will be arraigned for the crime, Minister Dame says he's very pleased and confident that investigations are on the right track and will be wrapped up shortly. Meanwhile, Attorney General Carl Bethel this morning expressing serious concern over the incident. Senator Bethel noting that it was especially shocking that the alleged assailant is a fellow RBDF officer and that the fact that the murder took place at the official residence of the head of state and allegedly between members of her security detail is particularly disturbing. The AG ended by, too, extending his deepest sympathies to Propal's family, adding that Bahamians ought to pray the spirit of irrational and hateful anger and violence to depart forever from the country. The opposition also offering up condolences, but in doing so, it called for answers into the incident as the attack raises serious questions about the protocols in place for the emotional and psychological fitness of those who hold sensitive positions in uniform branches. Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Davis is also questioning how security at the nation's highest value property was breached with a weapon, how an officer was killed, and the suspect made a clean getaway. The PLP Leaders then calling on the Prime Minister to state how the shooting is not an attack on the state. From the courts this evening, a week after he allegedly shot and killed a 34-year-old father of four girls, Chadwick Capron of McQuay Street was today charged with the intentional and unlawful killing of Brian Smith. It was shortly after midnight Easter Monday when officers responded to Forster Street Chippingham following reports of a male being shot. Now, police discovered Smith with injuries to his body. Attempts to revive him were futile. 21-year-old Capron, a.k.a. Oldie, who stood before Matt Magistrate Kara Turnquest DeVoe was not required to enter a plea and was remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections, where he will remain. Capron returns to court for a voluntary bill of indictment on May 30th. While well, the Financial Crimes Anti-Corruption Unit, that arm of the police force tasked with investigating financial crimes and corruption today escorted two people before the courts on a litany of forgery-related crimes, including fraud by false pretense, attempted forgery, and possession of forged documents. Charged with the bulk of the charges was 28-year-old Javon Miller of Opulent Drive, who pleaded not guilty to 11 counts of fraud, all reportedly occurring between April 5th and or April 26th of this year. It's alleged that during that period, Miller defrauded discount air conditioning on Carmica Road on two separate occasions of two-ton central air units, totaling over $9,600. It's further claimed that on April 5th, Miller was in possession of forged documents with intent to defraud a Capital One Visa credit card with the name Hezekiah Thompson and an American Express credit card in the name of Floyd Oliver. On April 25th, he was also found with a Chase Bank Visa card belonging to Floyd Oliver, a Serva Bank Visa credit and a Scotia Bank MasterCard, both belonging to Hezekiah Thompson. On the same date, he was found with a blank Visa card, no name attached, all of which he purported to be genuine, presenting to discount air conditioning. Finally, Miller was charged with three counts of uttering forged documents on April 5th and April 25th with the same Capital One Visa, Chase Visa, and American Express Visa cards. Miller was not granted bail. He was, however, advised that he could apply for bail at the Supreme Court. He was remanded to the BDC until June 25th for trial. Meantime, 30-year-old Dwight Ferguson of Fairview Heights was charged with receiving two four-ton AC units valued at $7,412.34, knowing the same to be obtained by an offense. He pleaded not guilty and was remanded until June 25th for trial. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.